Congratulations on the purchase of your new tenant floor cleaner. With proper use and care, your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems will perform well for many years to come. This operator training video will help you better understand how to prepare your machine for use, clean your floors and care for your machine so you get the longest life and best performance from your machine. Safety It is the operator's responsibility to operate the machine safely. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. The operator should read and fully understand the operator's manual prior to operating the machine. How the cleaning systems work. Your machine can effectively clean dirty floors. The one step button makes it possible to immediately begin cleaning with the activation of a single button. As the machine travels forward, the sweeping systems remove debris from the floor and place it in the hopper. The vacuum system draws dust and air through the hopper and dust control filter, and clean air is exhausted from the machine. To scrub the floor clean, the desired amount of cleaning solution is regulated and distributed to the floor. The brushes use the cleaning solution to scrub the floor clean. When traveling forward, the squeegee collects the dirty solution. The scrub vacuum fan draws the dirty solution collected by the squeegee from the floor and puts it into the recovery tank. Controls and Instrumentation The steering wheel controls the machine travel path. There is a control panel to the left of the steering wheel. An on-off key switch is used to control machine power. Turn the key to the right to turn the machine's power on and to the left to turn it off. The directional switch controls the forward or reverse direction of the machine. Place the switch in the forward position to propel forward and the reverse position to propel in reverse. The power kill switch stops all power to the machine. Press the switch to stop the machine power. To restart the machine, turn the power kill switch to the right and release it. Then cycle the key switch off and then on again. Note. The power kill switch should only be used in case of an emergency. It must not be used for normal stopping while the machine is moving, as this may damage the machine. The operating lights are controlled by the light switch. Place the switch in the middle position to turn on the optional safety lights. Press the top of the switch to turn on the operating lights and the optional safety lights. Press the bottom of the switch to turn off all lights. If your machine is equipped with a spray nozzle, this switch turns on the water supply. To turn on the spray nozzle water supply, press the top of the switch. Next, pull the spray nozzle from the back of the machine and clean as required. When you are finished cleaning, turn off the spray nozzle by pressing the bottom of the switch and then gently tug the spray nozzle hose and allow the hose to retract into the machine. Most of the cleaning functions are controlled by the operator using the control module in the center of the steering wheel. The horn is controlled by a large button at the top of the control module. Pressing anywhere on the button will sound the horn. If a supervisor has activated and configured an operator's checklist, the operator must complete the entire checklist before the machine can be operated. Once the checklist has been completed, the normal operator screen will appear. Pressing on the question mark button brings up another screen that allows an operator to view controls help, watch a startup video, select a different language, or log in as a different operator or a supervisor. When the controls help button is pressed, an image appears to explain the control functions on the operator's normal screen. When the startup video button is pressed, the operator can view a starting to clean video. When the select language button is pressed, the operator can choose the language that is displayed on the menus. Refer to the operator's manual for instructions on changing the operating language. Anytime the back button is pressed, you will return to the previous screen. Anytime the home button is pressed, you will return to the normal operator's screen. Pressing the login button will allow a different operator or supervisor to log into the machine.
On the normal operator's screen, the battery icon displays the battery charge remaining. Pressing the battery button will display the battery charge remaining, the number of hours the machine has been operated, the solution tank level, and the recovery tank level. It will then return to the normal display. The SE or Severe Environment switch is a standard feature when your machine is equipped with the ECH20 technology. The ECH20 technology will be explained in more detail later in this video. This SE feature enables you to switch to conventional mode cleaning for areas where ECH20 is not designed to clean. As you are approaching a hard to clean area, this feature allows you to turn off the ECH20 system and clean the area using detergent high water flow and high brush pressure. The machine will clean with the ECH20 technology when it is activated and when the SE system is turned off. When the SE icon is not lit, the severe environment cleaning system is turned off. When the SE switch is pressed and released, the ECH20 system is turned off and the detergent pump timer turns on for 30 seconds. During that time, detergent is injected into the water going to the scrub brushes. Also, the cleaning solution flow rate and the main scrub brush down pressure increase to their maximum settings. If desired, you do have the option to reduce the flow rate and the brush pressure. When the SE switch is pressed and held for more than two seconds, the detergent pump turns on and stays on for the amount of time it has been configured for. The length of time for each of these functions is configurable by a qualified service person. In both cases, when the time expires or the SE switch is pressed again, the ECH20 system is reactivated and all flow rates and the brush down pressures return to the original settings chosen by the operator. If the SE detergent tank is empty, the SE button icon will start to flash. Refill the SE detergent tank with the recommended detergent. If your machine is equipped with the ECH20 technology, pressing the ECH20 button will place the technology in standby. When the screen background is blue, ECH20 is either in standby or operating. When the screen background is black, the ECH20 technology is inactive or not an option on your machine. If a condition that the operator needs to be aware of or a machine fault occurs, the fault indicator button icon will flash. Pressing the fault indicator button will display the condition or fault. While scrubbing, the brush pressure and the solution flow rate should be adjusted to provide the desired cleaning results. When only the bottom brush pressure indicator is highlighted, the brush pressure is set to the lowest setting. To increase the brush pressure, press and release the plus button to move to the next higher setting. Pressing the minus button will reduce the pressure. The solution flow rate is adjusted with the solution increase plus button and the solution decrease minus button. Under normal cleaning conditions, the brush pressure and solution flow rate should be set to the minimum settings required to clean the floor. The large green button in the center of the control module is the one step button. Pressing this button turns on all cleaning systems that are set to standby. Pressing the button again turns off all cleaning systems. When the one step button is pressed to stop cleaning, the machine remembers which settings were active. When the one step button is pressed to start cleaning again, the machine will return to those settings. There are three scrubbing function buttons to the right of the one step button and three sweeping function buttons to the left of the one step button. The three scrubbing function buttons control the main scrubbing brushes, squeegee and vacuum fan, and the optional scrubbing side brush. The three sweeping function buttons control the main sweeping brush, dust control vacuum systems, and side sweeping brushes. Before the one step button is pressed, Pressing any of the scrubbing buttons or sweeping buttons will place the equipped function in standby. When the one step button is pressed, any function in standby will be activated. When the one step button is pressed again, all cleaning functions will be turned off, but stay in standby. When the one step button is pressed to start cleaning again, any function in standby will be activated again. If the sweeping systems have been used, 
When they are deactivated, the filter shaker system will automatically run. If additional dust filter cleaning is desired, you can press the dust filter shaker button to activate the shaker. It will automatically turn off after a period of time. On the lower left and lower right portions of the control module are buttons that turn the water flow on and off. When approaching a turn while scrubbing, the solution flow should be turned off and then back on again when exiting the turn. Anytime the machine is propelling in reverse, the camera will turn on in your display so you can see what is behind your machine and avoid obstacles. You should always be aware of everything and everyone near and around the machine. While cleaning with your machine, you can press the camera icon to use the Performance View feature and evaluate the performance of your machine. The display will return to the normal operator's control screen after a short period of time. To dump the hopper, press the hopper control icon. To raise the hopper, press and hold the hopper lift switch. With the hopper raised, the hopper rollout switch can be pressed and held until the hopper rolls to the dump position. Pressing and holding the hopper roll-in switch will return the hopper to the rolled-in position. Pressing and holding the hopper lower switch will lower the hopper. The three numbers on the bottom of the Pro Panel display can be configured by a supervisor for cleaning areas. When configured, when one of the numbers is pressed, the machine cleaning systems will be configured as determined by the supervisor. There are operator videos available for the operator to watch when the machine is not moving. Pressing the Film Clip button allows the operator access to those videos. The machine's propel speed is controlled by a foot pedal. Press down on the pedal to increase propel speed and release the pedal to decrease speed. The brake pedal slows and stops the machine. To press the brake pedal to stop the machine. To set the parking brake with the brake pedal depressed, press down on the toe pedal and remove your foot from the brake pedal. To release the parking brake, depress and release the brake pedal again. Before operating the machine. Prior to operating the machine, there are checks that need to be completed to make sure your machine is ready to clean. Check the battery charge level. Check the operating lights. Check the right side squeegee for wear and damage. Check brushes for wear and damage. Remove any wire, string, or twine that may have become wrapped around the brushes. If your machine is equipped with the ES option, ensure the ES filter at the bottom of the recovery tank is clean. For ECH2O scrubbing, confirm all conventional cleaning agents are drained and rinsed from the solution tank. Check the rear squeegees for wear and damage. Check the solution and recovery tank cover seals for wear or damage. Confirm that the vacuum fan inlet filter is clean. Then remove the debris tray, empty it, and wash it out. Check the left side squeegee for wear and damage. Check the hydraulic fluid level. Check the condition of the hopper dust filter and seals. Check the steering and braking systems for proper operation. Check maintenance records to determine maintenance requirements. Preparing your machine to scrub. For conventional scrubbing, open the solution tank cover. Partially fill the solution tank with water, not to exceed 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour the required amount of detergent into the solution tank. Attention! 
Only use recommended cleaning detergents. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. Fill the solution tank with water. Fill the detergent tank with a recommended detergent if your machine is equipped with either the ES technology or ECH2O technology and SE system. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. If your machine is equipped with the ES technology, follow the machine preparation instructions presented later in this video. If your machine is equipped with the ECH2O scrubbing technology, confirm all conventional cleaning agents are drained and rinsed from the solution tank. Confirm that the solution tank is filled with clear, cool water only. Next, turn the key switch on and place the desired scrubbing systems in standby. Then press the large green one-step button and start scrubbing. Preparing your machine to sweep. Once the hopper has been emptied and the dust filter and seals have been inspected, the machine is ready to sweep. First, turn the key switch on and place the desired sweeping systems in standby. Then press the large green one-step button and start sweeping. Preparing your machine to sweep and scrub. To sweep and scrub at the same time, turn on the key switch, place the desired sweeping and scrubbing systems in standby, and press the large green one-step button to start cleaning. Optional ECH2O Technology ECH2O is a technology that electrically converts plain tap water into a cleaner. If your machine is equipped with the ECH2O technology, you will see the ECH2O logo on the side of the machine. To use this technology, fill the solution tank with clean, cool water only. The water temperature should not exceed 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents, or an ECH2O system failure may result. Next, turn on the key switch. Then, press the ECH2O switch to enable the technology. Next, press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. While scrubbing with ECH2O activated, you will be notified if there is a fault in the ECH2O system. Notify a qualified service person if a fault exists. Optional ES Technology The ES system recycles recovered solution from the recovery tank through a filtration system and transfers it back into the solution tank for reuse. As the solution is reused, detergent is injected into the solution to maintain a consistent concentration and improve cleaning ability. To use the ES technology, fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab and fill the recovery tank half full. Note. The water temperature must not exceed 60 degrees centigrade, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Fill the ES detergent tank with the recommended detergent and install the cap. Warning! Do not use flammable materials in the detergent tank. Next, turn on the key switch. Then press the ES switch to enable the technology. Next, press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. Main brush information. The amount and type of soilage play an important role in determining the type of brushes to use on your machine. For best results, use the correct brush or pad type for your cleaning application. Brush and pad application guidance is located in the operator's manual. Part numbers are located in the parts manual. When the brushes need replacing, always replace them in sets. Changing disc brushes. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Open the brush compartment door. Next, unlatch the squeegee assembly and swing the assembly outward. Turn the brush until you can see the brush spring clip. Press the spring clip together with your thumb and index finger. The brush will drop off the brush drive hub. When using pads, attach the pad to the pad driver and secure the pad with the center lock 
before installing the pad driver on the machine. To install the pad driver or brush on your machine, align it with the motor hub and hook the spring clip on one of the hub points. Next, press down on the brush and it will snap into place on the brush hub. When the spring clip snaps into place, confirm that the brush is securely installed. Next, close the squeegee assembly and secure the latch. Then close the brush compartment door. Changing cylindrical brushes. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Open the brush compartment door. Next, unlatch and swing the squeegee assembly outward. Remove the idler plate from the scrub head. Remove the brush from the scrub head by pulling outward on the brush. Slide the brush onto the drive plug on the scrub head and secure the idler plate. Next, close and latch the squeegee assembly and close the brush compartment door. Follow the same procedure on the other side of the machine to replace the other scrub brush. The optional side brush or brushes provide a wider scrubbing or sweeping path and allow you to clean next to walls and racks. Changing the side scrubbing brush. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Next, manually spin the brush until the spring handles are visible and then squeeze the spring handles to release the brush. To install the brush on your machine, align it with the motor hub and hook the spring clip on one of the hub points. Next, press down on the brush and it will snap into place on the brush hub. When the spring clip snaps into place, confirm the brush is securely installed. Changing the side sweeping brush or brushes. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Next, reach under the side sweeping brush and pull the retaining pin from the shaft and then remove the washer and the brush from the shaft. To install the brush on your machine, slide it onto the shaft, align it with the drive pin, and install the washer and the retaining pin. Repeat this process if there is a left side sweeping brush installed on your machine. Rotating or changing the main sweeping brush. Rotate the brush end for end after every 50 hours of operation for maximum brush life and best sweeping performance. To rotate or replace the brush, turn off the machine. Open the main sweeping brush compartment access door. Then remove the idler plate. Pull the brushes from the main sweeping compartment. Replace or rotate the main brushes end for end. Slide the brushes into the main sweeping brush compartment and all the way onto the drive hubs. Reinstall the main sweeping brush's idler plate. Close the main sweeping brush compartment access door. Rotating or changing the rear squeegees. When the blades become worn, simply rotate them end for end or top to bottom to use a new wiping edge. Replace the squeegee blades when all the edges are worn. If your machine has the rear squeegee guard, lock it into the up position. Remove the vacuum water trap and hose assembly from the squeegee frame. Lower the two retainer levers and pull the squeegee frame from the machine. To access the rear squeegee, loosen the squeegee band latch and remove the band from the assembly. Remove the rear squeegee and rotate it to a new edge or replace it with a new one. Install the band and secure it with the rear squeegee band latch. To access the front squeegee, loosen the squeegee band latch and remove the band from the assembly.
Remove the front squeegee and rotate it to a new edge or replace it with a new one. Install the band and secure it with the front squeegee band latch. Next, install the squeegee frame on the machine. And reattach the vacuum hose. Lower and secure the squeegee guard if it was raised. Changing the side squeegees. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn the machine off and set the parking brake. Unlatch the side squeegee retaining band. Remove the retaining band from the side squeegee assembly. Pull the old squeegee from the squeegee frame assembly and rotate it to an unworn edge or replace it when all four edges are worn. Reinstall the side squeegee retaining band by hooking the front of the band on the front of the side squeegee frame. Then place it on the side squeegee and secure the retaining latch. Changing the side brush squeegee. For better access to the side brush squeegee, the squeegee assembly can be removed from the machine by turning the yellow release handle counterclockwise. After it is removed from the machine, release the squeegee band latch and remove the band from the assembly. Then, the outer squeegee and backup strip can be removed. Rotate or replace the inner squeegee. Rotate or replace the outer squeegee. Next, reinstall the band and secure the latch. Install the side brush squeegee assembly onto the machine and turn the yellow handle clockwise to secure the assembly. Cleaning with your machine. Before cleaning with your machine, manually pick up oversized debris, wire, string, twine, or any other debris that could become wrapped around or tangled in the brushes. Press the one step button to start cleaning. If necessary, set the scrub and sweep settings for the area being cleaned. Press the propel pedal to begin cleaning. For safety, drive slowly on inclines and slippery surfaces. When operating in reverse, the rear squeegee will raise to prevent damaging the squeegee. When traveling forward again, all scrubbing systems will turn back on. To stop the machine, release the propel pedal and press the brake pedal. As the machine stops, the cleaning systems will stop. They will begin again when you resume propelling. To stop cleaning, press the one step button. Emptying and cleaning the machine. When your cleaning is finished, the machine needs to be emptied and cleaned. For safety, before leaving or servicing the machine, stop on a level surface, turn the machine off, and set the parking brake. The tank drain hoses are protected by the rear bumper. Lower the rear bumper to drain the tanks. Note: The rear bumper can be used as a step to gain better access to the solution and recovery tanks for cleaning. Warning: The rear bumper step should not be used for transporting equipment or people. Place the recovery tank drain hose next to a floor drain. The drain hose has an adjustable flow drain cuff to manage the flow rate during draining. By slowly turning the drain cuff to the first notch, 
the flow rate is controlled to reduce splashing. Continuing to rotate the drain cuff will increase the flow rate. Removing the cuff will allow full flow. Lift the recovery tank cover and secure the cover brace. Then remove the debris tray, empty it, and wash it out. Next, use water to clean the recovery tank. Do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. If your machine is equipped with an ES system and it was used, you will need to clean the ES filter in the recovery tank, as well as empty and clean the solution tank and filter. Check the vacuum fan inlet filter daily. Clean the inlet filter with water when it is dirty. Allow the filter to dry completely before reinstalling it. Once the drain hoses are stored, raise and secure the rear bumper. Note, if your machine has a cylindrical scrub head, remove and clean the debris tray. When the sweeping systems have been used, you'll need to run the shaker system to remove dust from the filter and then you'll need to empty the hopper. Charging the battery. To prolong the life of the battery, recharge it only if the machine was used for a total of 30 minutes or more. Do not leave the battery discharged for lengthy periods. To charge the battery, first transport the machine to a well-ventilated area. Park the machine on a flat, dry surface. Turn the key off. If you are charging a wet battery, lead-acid battery, the fluid level should be checked before charging the battery. The fluid should be at the level shown. If the battery fluid level is too low, damage to the battery will result. If the battery fluid level is too high, the fluid may overflow while charging. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Battery emits hydrogen gas. Keep sparks and open flame away. If your machine is equipped with a battery watering system, you will need to check if the battery needs water. Each cell cover has an indicator near the center of the cover. There are only a few steps to using the battery watering system. First, confirm the battery is fully charged. Connect the fill hose adapter to the battery watering system connector and turn on the water supply valve. Turn off the supply valve when the turbine in the adapter stops turning. This indicates that all of the cells are filled to the proper level. Disconnect the machine's connector from the battery connector. Next, connect the charger's DC cord to the battery connector. The supplied charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when fully charged. Attention! Do not disconnect the charger's DC cord from the machine's receptacle when the charger is operating, because arcing may result. If the charger must be interrupted during charging, press the OFF button on the charger to turn off the charger before disconnecting the battery from the charger. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant machine will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment.